Okay. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Now give me the bottle. Opener. Okay. Oh, wow. So now she's got a bottle. What's this bottle? It is a bottle of ginger brew. Let's see if she can open the bottle. Oh, uh, <laughs> with a drone bottle opener. All right. I. Oh my god. Don't know Come out out. where the actual bottle opener is. Can I see? Yeah. Wait, where's the bottle opener? There. Oh, there. Good job, Mo. No, I don't know. If that's, I don't think that's it. I think that's it. Right here? Is this it? I don't know. Let's give it a try. No, what if you break the flying thing? Um, no, no, no. <laughs> Oh okay, wait, that's it, that's it. Okay, but don't I'll... hold it like that. It's gonna. Is that, is that not right, huh? No, it's the other way. Which other way? Like this. It's not. It's not like that. Oh, yeah, maybe you're right. Okay. Okay. Oh, yay! Yeah! Yay! You did it! That's so extra. Wow, okay. A drone bottle opener. Buzz, which they should have called the fizz because you're supposed to open a bottle of fizzy pop with the bottle opener in the front not a bottle of an alcoholic beverage <laughs> but you can see here it's called the buzz all this is silk screen this is another product from those guys at Emacs that I am friends with and I used to fly with a long time ago when we were all kind of starting however um, we've all become very busy they're deep in Emacs I just don't have time for anything and so I haven't seen them very much but this is another product from them, and I really appreciate all these products that they put together. I'm, I'm more a fan of this team of guys rather than Emacs in particular. I just like things they make because I know who they are. I know that they're building this stuff for themselves. They're designing everything for people that actually fly. And the products that they come up with are generally a little bit better thought out than most of the products on the market. However, all that being said, I personally don't recommend anybody use or just buy any ready-to-fly quad. I, you, you can always build something better than anything ready-to-fly. However, there are a lot of people that prefer to just buy something and fly it. And so there are a number of ready-to-fly quads that are out there right now that are pretty good. And these days, it's really easy to put together something that performs really excellently. So this is just another product that performs great. It's from Emacs, and it's a new ready-to-build, ready-to-fly quad. Now let's go over it. So. Let's start with the frame in general. The, the people that are designing the frames, Brandon in particular, is the one that designs most of the frames. I don't know if he was the primary designer of this frame design, but this is a really unique and not unique frame design at the same time, but I do think it serves its purpose and it is actually really good. I'm gonna spend a lot of time talking about the frame because I really do like the frame design. It is a really well thought out frame and you'll see why when I go over all the parts. So their concept for this frame design was that it's something that's a little bit more robust and it's a little bit more durable for the beginner or the average person that's going to buy a ready to build, ready to fly quad, which generally is probably not going to be a pro pilot because we don't typically like, we have our own preference of parts that we like, or I'm not like saying I'm a pro pilot, but I've been doing this a while, so I have my preference of things that I prefer to use over anything that's in a ready to fly quad. And this is just another instance where there's components in here that I personally wouldn't use, but it's they're perfectly fine for anybody that would want to just buy a ready-built quad. So let's start by going over the frame after I've dug myself into a hole. Okay, so the bottom plate here is a small bottom plate, as you can see. You can see that the arms are using two screws each and they butt up against each other in the middle. This structure of the arm 
and layout of the stack in the middle is almost identical to, not almost, it is pretty much identical to my own frame design, my own glide design. I think it is the most optimal method of mounting the arms to the frame because it's only using two screws per arm, it makes it really easy to swap arms, and it leaves the stack completely independent of the arms, which is very important to me for two reasons. Number one, the convenience of actually being able to swap your arm without dealing with any stack screws and fumbling with all the stuff involved with the stack. And number two, you do get more vibrations that feed into the stack with when the arm is attached to those screws. However, these days with the soft mounting and the rubber grommets, it's really not a big issue in, in that respect. It was way back when, but now it's more of just a convenience issue. And even if there is a potential vibration issue, it's not there, it's gone. You just eliminate it entirely. And you don't really lose anything by moving the arms away from the stack. So the frames that involve stack screws with the arms, I'm just not a fan of, and I'm really happy to see that they have realized the same thing. Oh my God, I just realized that I lost two motor screws. How many times do you go flying and you come back and you're like, oh my, or maybe they just forgot. To, I hope they just forgot to put those screws in. I hope I didn't just lose them randomly in flight. Anyways, let's move on. So this lower stack, this lower um, plate here, it actually has soft mounting built into the lower plate, which I'm not a huge fan of. I prefer my soft mounting to, build, to be built into the flight controller. And that's because that allows me to use just really long, solid steel screws for my stack. And... I can tighten those screws however much I want. I don't have to deal with any of this plastic stuff. And uh, if you do tighten these screws, if you over tighten them with these rubber grommets in the carbon stack, in the carbon, just like the rubber in the carbon, it's gonna squish the, car the rubber against the carbon and it kind of defeats the purpose of the soft mounting. But you can see that it is pretty well soft mounted. The stack does move pretty nicely, so it is isolating well. However, I'm pretty sure those screws are some sort of Loctite into those uh, plastic things that I absolutely despise. Actually, are they plastic? Yeah, they, they look like they're plastic. I'm not sure. I'm not really going to take it apart. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that the screw is all the way through the stack. But if it's not, if it is a plastic standoff, then you are risking potentially breaking the stack, whatever. I'm not a huge fan of the stack construction, nor am I a huge fan of the electronics because I haven't had the best of luck with Emacs Electro Emac electronics. They're not bad, but I have had some failures, failures in the past and I would like to have no failures, but everything fails at some point. So the stack is fine. The electronics are totally fine. The mounting of the whole apparatus is not my preference, but it is totally fine and totally adequate for this kind of a quad. Next, moving on, you can see that the arms themselves are four millimeters, and that's not a bad thing. I know five millimeters is pretty much the standard these days, but four millimeters is not a bad thing, and they, I think they did that for um, two particular reasons. Number one being that, when you have a four millimeter arm, you can make the arm wider and it's not as heavy as a five millimeter arm that's wider. And a wider arm actually resists the twisting motion when you crack the end of the arm, end of the motor here. And that resists the twisting fracture, or what I call the green stick fracture, which is a misnomer in the medical industry for this kind of a fracture. But I call it like a green stick fracture where it's just a wobbly arm or a noodle fracture, whatever it is. And the wider arm resists that. And that's something that a new pilot which I'm, I'm assuming this thing was made for, wouldn't really notice. They would just keep flying and the, the quad would just fly like crap because it's like oscillating and wobbling all over the place because you really have to look for the twist in the arm. And so I think that's one reason why they went with a four millimeter arm. They also put these nice big motor bumpers on the end of the arm, which is massively appreciated. These are also 2306 motors. So that motor bumper needs to be extra wide, extra big because the motor is a little bit wider. I'll go over the second reason why I think they use four millimeter arms a little bit later, but you can see that the, the, the arms are braced with this top plate of carbon here, and that is just a nice carbon brace. The, um, the front end here is probably the real business end, and that's the end where everybody's uh, got their eye on, and it is incredibly robust. It is probably the best possible camera protection you can have on any quad, so that's super nice. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the GoPro mounting, I would hope that somebody, or not hope, I'm pretty sure that people will make like a, a TPU mount that just slips over these two standoffs over here. And you could probably just get different angles just by with the TPU thing. They can even probably put different holes in the TPU to give you different angles. And that's really nice, actually. It's really nice to have it that way, but I don't prefer the strapped GoPro because it just flies out of the thing. And I would rather just have a big TPU mounted thing on top of the, on top of the whole thing, but whatever, it's nice and it's fine. And the angle is totally great. I'm pretty sure it's a 30 or 35 degree angle. I haven't measured it. If I measure it, I'm going to put it on the screen. 
And then moving on to the top plate, the top plate is a full three millimeter top plate and they are using the top plate as a structural element in the frame, both for the front and for the whole frame in general, which is a very nice thing to see because um, it's a very useful piece of the frame. You don't have to base everything just on the bottom deck of the frame. Without this top plate, the frame would not be sturdy, would not be strong, and it is nicely kind of mounted together. The back of it, you can see it has this little piece of carbon that's wedged between two top and bottom plates, and it holds the antenna mount, which is super nice, super clean. I mean, it's a really well thought out, put together frame. And the other reason why I believe that they went with four millimeter arms is because it cuts a nice amount of weight off the frame itself. So when you have five millimeter arms, the whole arm is five millimeters thick. And also the center portion and the motor mounting portion are also five millimeters thick. So you have to deal with that extra weight that you don't need. You don't need five millimeter thick carbon in the middle of the arm here or at the end where the motors mount to the arm. So it is frustrating. And this is not like a skinny little frame. This is kind of a robust frame. It's got a three millimeter top plate. It's got this big aluminum thing on the front. So why bother adding more weight with five millimeter arms? Just go with four millimeter arms. They're super easy to swap. They're gonna be strong. They're totally fine. And I think that's the other reason why, why the, they went with four millimeter arms. And I would say that I expect this frame weight to be in the 110 to 117 gram range, which is a really nice range for the frame. The all-up weight with a 4S is a 4S quad and um, GoPro and everything is about 650 to 670 grams, which is perfectly fine for a ready-to-fly quad. It's actually decent for a ready-to-fly quad. They usually come in at a little bit higher weight. Looking at the rest of it, it uses, I believe, a 200 milliwatt VTX, uh, which has an MMCX connector on it, which is nice. And it has a CADEX uh, Turbo Micro S1, which I'm pretty sure is a CCD camera, which is great. I'm a fan of the CCD cameras. If you watched my how to choose a um, FPV camera video, you know that I would recommend either a CCD camera or a 1 1 8 inch sensor camera like the Micro Eagle. And now we have the Starlet coming from Cadex very soon. And Foxier says they're working on a 1 1 8 sensor product as well, but we'll see if that actually comes around. Looking at the rest of it, it is using 2306, 2400 kV motors, which are made by Emacs, of course. They do have nine millimeter bearings. They do look like pretty decent motors. They perform great. They do have a little bit thinner magnets, which is Emacs's style, which it kind of plays into the, the design of the motor. It does have to be designed for those thinner magnets, but they perform really great, as you can see. The one thing I'm not a fan of are the props that they come with. I'm not a huge fan of the Avan Flow. I feel like it's pretty in inefficient and it's not, it's just not my speed. It's a little bit slow as well. Um, they have this Shimitar prop, which is their new prop. It is a 3.2 pitch prop. Let me look at the page again. It is a, no, 2.6 inch pitch. So it's a super low pitch prop, or at least they say it's a super low pitch. It does have this drastic scoop in the middle. Um, it's it's perfectly fine prop. It performs nicely. It gives you nice efficiency. It's just really slow. I'm not really a fan of either one of these Avan props, but they're totally fine. These are the props that I prefer, which is the Gemfan um, 5146.6, which I hate the name, but hey, it's there. It's a really good prop. That's supposed to come out soon. It's supposed to have already been out, but it's not out yet. And that's pretty much the entire Buzz setup. So yeah, I hope you liked it. Um, Floss your teeth and go have a fizzy pop. I forgot to talk about the performance of this quad, <laughs> and I and I didn't really talk about it because, uh, like I said earlier, you you can't. It's really hard to make a quad that doesn't perform well today. I mean, any garbage motor you throw on a quad with any flight controller with Betaflight with a new Betaflight, it will fly well. And this quad fly is totally fine. It doesn't fly unlike any of my own quads. It is a little bit underpowered compared to my 6S quads because it is a 4S quad, and it is generally kind of lower KV 4S quad. Sorry, that was a misnomer. It, just because it's 4S doesn't mean it's less powerful. It's just lower KV and 4S, so it's just not as powerful as my higher KV 6S quads, and so that's why I crash it. But it's performs great there's not there's zero concern i don't think anybody any pilot would really have an issue with the performance of the squad so don't worry about that that's the last thing you need to worry about